What's up, YouTube? Vapor Functional here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the E-Leaf iStick TC 200 watt device. This thing is a pretty cool device, and we are going to talk a little bit about it on the end of this video, but we're going to go down and take a look and show you the things and the mechanical features that this thing has, and it is a 3 18650 device, just like the RX 200. So let's take it down and take a look at it. All right, you guys, so we are up close with the E-Leaf iStick 200 watt, the TC 200 watt, actually. This is the box that it comes in. I do not know what happened with that. The paper is kind of coming off on mine. That's the box that comes in. It comes in black, gray, and white. Inside the box itself, pretty much a blank lid. You don't really need to see that. Inside you have your user manual, how to use it and everything. It tells you you have your LED screen, you have your battery cover and your 510 connector and a lock for the battery connector. And it tells you basically positive and negative how to insert your batteries. And it goes over all the modes of this thing. Pretty much the same thing as a RX200. And inside the box you have your mod itself and you have a USB cable for charging and updating. And you have a warning card. It says, please do not use batteries with torn casings as it is a safety hazard. All right, so let's get this box out of the way. All right, so we have the mod itself right here. That's how it looks. It's very, very nice. It says ISEC TC 200 watt. You have your 510 connection, and it is like a, I believe it's a brass plated 510 connections. And as you can see on mine, it says sample. It has really nice lines. It doesn't have any overhang of any parts on here or any gaps in the actual mod itself. Then on the back, you have your battery door. This is kind of like a tricky switch. It's easier if you do it upside down. You don't have any batteries in there. It kind of has a little bit issues with opening because it kind of needs a little bit of weight. Let me adjust my viewfinder so I can see what I'm doing. Inside, I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can bring it into light. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but inside there is a plus, a giant plus down there on the terminal for your battery. And there's a plus on this side, it's big and red. And there's a minus in the middle. I wish I could find something that I could show you it a lot easier. Maybe I might have a light or something somewhere. I've seen other reviewers. They mentioned the stuff inside, you can't really see it. But there you go, you can see it on the inside. So, to make a mistake of putting your batteries in wrong would be idiotic. Okay? And there is small plus and minuses down there if you can't really see. And it is also right here on the back side. Alright, so put that light away so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to put my batteries in. So, on the outside is negative. So, negative goes up. One two and positive in the middle there you go flap down there you go see what I was talking about earlier how it's a lot easier to open up the door when you have batteries in there there you go because it kind of has a little bit of springiness in these little pieces back here then you have down here your connection for the bottom part and these are also spring loaded down here as well So this door itself, it does have connection on the inside. I'm pretty sure that it does have protection for your positive so it doesn't short out inside of here. I kind of want to take it apart myself just to check, but I don't see any screws to take it apart. 
So I believe they have that all done, right? So let's put this in and look at this. Uh, usually when you close the door and you put your batteries in, the mod is already on. So this is how it looks when it's on. You have your wattage up, wattage down. This goes as the minimum of, let's see, 1.0 watts all the way up to 200 watts. It goes fairly quick. There you go. And it does go in one increments. And you have your modes to lock the resistance when you hold the power button and the plus button. And if you want to turn stealth mode on, you hold the negative button, or if you want to call it the minus button, watch is down, and your power button, and you have stealth mode. All right, so let me turn stealth mode off so we can see what we're doing. There we go. And you have your mode right here. See, the thing is about this is it takes a while to get to each setting, so you're gonna have to hold the mode. There you have nickel, and you have titanium, then you have stainless steel, then you have your manual setting number one, manual setting number two, manual setting number three, and you're back to wattage. Say if I was in nickel, see it says your temperature right here. The temperature goes down in Fahrenheit to 200 and the maximum is 600. And when you click higher, you're in Celsius and that is the lowest is 100 degrees Celsius all the way up to 315 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna go back down to Fahrenheit, I'm just going to be at 200. And the way you're going to change your wattage, because your wattage is displayed on the bottom right there, then it has your ohms on the top. The wattage right here, how are you going to change that? So the way that you change it is you're going to have to hit the mode and the wattage up button at the same time. And you change it that way. And it works the same way when you do mode and watch it down. One thing that really annoys me is say if you want to have it, or is it at right now? It's at 89.8 watts. Maybe if you want to put it at 90 watts. So the hard part about this is that you're going to have to push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. And I'm at 90.3 watts. I just want to have it straight at 90. 90 watts, you got to continuously push it again and again and again and again and again and again. Because once you push it and you hold them down, it goes fairly fast. So it comes, it's, it's basically a hassle when you try to hold down the button and it goes really fast. So you have to continuously jump it, jump it, jump it, jump it, and just watch it what's really small and it will be at like 99 watts. That's my only big pet peeve on this thing. It does have a spring-loaded connection. I'm gonna get something to show you the connection itself. Turn the mod off. You have your connection right here. It's just like the RX200. It has a very stiff connection. And for an RDA, I'll show you on a Sapor RDA. It has buttery smooth threads. It has stainless steel threading in here, so that's very good. But some RDAs, like this one, it has a small gap because this one isn't really a hybrid where it doesn't have a protruding 510 that much. I have some with a protruding 510 
that will show you. I just gotta find it. Let me see. See if I have. Here you go. I have a non adjustable 510 on this Moonshot RDTA. As you can see, some on here, when you screw it down, it's going to leave a small gap. This one isn't too bad. Here's one right here. I have an Eric RDA by Tobeka. This one has more of a protruding 510. There you go. It has a pretty big gap. So that's my only other con with this thing. But all in all, it's pretty good. I have a Royal Hunter Mini and I have a glass cap from Trinity Glass and most of the time when you have a glass cap you can push it down over your RDA because this RDA doesn't really go down that far but you can push your glass cap down to make it flush so it looks good so you can use it like that and size comparison wise you have say the RX200 and this mod itself let me take this off so you can see top and bottom they basically have the same just about the same board got a little bit of juice on there but size wise that's how it looks from the side very thin compared to the RX200 So these basically are going to be pretty big competitors with each other clashing on the market. I mean, I prefer the RX200, but this thing is pretty good and it's very comfortable in your hand. So when I hold it, you have the button, fire it, I can't reach the actual waters up and waters down. You can lock them. I'll show you right now. Pause it up. Positive up and positive down, or waters up, waters down, lock it. Then you can fire it, can't move your wattage. Hold it down some more. There you go. When you turn this device off, same as the RX200, it's five clicks on, five clicks off. You hold the wattage up and power button. This brings you to the menus where you have your custom menus for if you have Nichrome or Kenthal or any other wire where you know there's the resistance for it. You can uh, set that on there and then you can use it for temperature control. And when you hold the down button or the negative watt is down, Hold the power button. This will tell you your battery life. For all three of the cells. Then on here, when you click it around 20 times really fast, it will tell you your version. And this is 1.00. So when you hold water jump and water down, by themselves when the device is powered off that is how you flip your screen and you keep holding it it'll continue to flip there you go mode button when you hold it doesn't do anything yeah that's about it Batteries, like I said, are easy to go in and out. Just drop on out, close it up, and change your batteries or put your mod away. 
All right, so let's take it back up, talk a little bit more about the pros and cons on this thing, and uh, get you guys out of here. So take it up real quick, and I'll see you guys up top. All right, and we are back. So we took a look at this. We saw the features that this thing has. It basically has the same screen. Well, just about the same board and everything as the RX200 and most of the DNA chips. This is not a DNA chip. This is actually their own board. It has real good ergonomical corners on here. It fits really good in your hand and it's really comfortable and I like how smooth it is. It doesn't have any rough edges on it. So when you're holding it in your hand, you're not gonna have anything pinching you. Uh, the only thing that I don't really like about this is just the way the menus work. It has different menu buttons rather than just having the same old, same old like the RX200. I think the RX200 is a little bit easier to use. This thing, it's a lot easier to access your batteries on here. I like it because it has that, that door on the bottom with the hinge that just opens up and your batteries just fall right out and you insert your batteries back in. About this thing, you can USB charge it. I wouldn't recommend USB charging on any mods because you can have problems because a lot of these are made in China. It's really good quality, but you never know. I have a charger that I use all the time. So it's pretty simple for me, but if I was going to buy this thing, I would absolutely buy a charger with it. But just because it has the three AC650s and you don't know if it's going to charge some of them, to a certain extent, some batteries in your device are going to be lower than others just because how weak the batteries might be of age. If you marry your batteries in here, you never know. Some batteries can go dead faster than others. But in other words, it's, it's a very great device. I just highly would recommend using a charger. And my only other con is that the... 510s is just about the same on all the 510s that are in the RX200. Um, anything that Elite makes, it's the same 510 that they've been using, and there's going to be a gap. I have a Tiffany glass, uh, Tiffany tanks glass cap on here on a Royal Hunter Mini. I like this setup right here, but the thing is, I could slide my cap a little bit lower than the RDA, so it kind of fills in that gap. But when you have the actual RDA itself, like a, just a regular stainless steel, it does have gaps. And I'm not really happy about that because I wish that an RDA would sit flush because that's the presentation of your product. And if you're having something that doesn't fit right, that's right away, before you even use it, you're going to think, hey, well, it kind of looks dumb. You know what I mean? So, yeah, for even if you guys need to fix this product because that's just one big key if they fix that this thing well-rounded is a solid device and it's going to be a really good seller this thing's going to cost around 60 bucks it is not out yet it is on pre-order but you guys can't pick one up it's going to be around 60 dollars that's what uh eleaf world their actual website is going to have it on um this thing is updatable just like the rx200 there is no updates for me yet so i'm just basically on uh a beta program or whatever they want to release it on as for the samples and whatnot but as soon as it's released i'm pretty sure that there's going to be an update for it and who knows it could be like the rx200 with a 3.10 update that you're going to be able to kick this thing up to 250 watts and the rx200 is advertised at 200 so you never know they might have a really good update it might change some settings up might change the way that you move your wattage up and down because that's another con that i have I just don't really like how you have to constantly hold the mode button and hold up and down. But then when you're holding the mode button, my problem is I run into changing the mode rather than changing the wattage. So you're going to go back to the wattage that you have, maybe if you're running stainless steel or maybe if you're running titanium or if you're running uh, nickel wire. And you're trying to change your wattage, you have to push the buttons at the same time. You might change over to another setting and not really know it and it's gonna be a big handful because it's kinda gonna piss you off because that's one thing that I'm going through with this device so far I like this device very very much I received this free of charge just for review from LA Vapor Store you guys can check them out I'm gonna leave their links down below in the description anyway so let me take another vape on this thing 
And I'm actually vaping on a really, really good juice that just came out. And I have there's several bucks right here. This is a really good juice. It's called uh, Fresh Juice Co. It comes in kind of like a shoe box. This thing is really cool. And they come in 60 milliliter bottles. This is like a blueberry donut. And the donut flavor is just outstanding. It's really, really good. I really like good donut flavors. So this one is very good. And running this on here on a 0.42 ohm build, running at 130 watts. That flavor is really coming out and I'm really enjoying it because it's a solid vape. The pros on this device, I mean, it fires right away. I have my glass cap, you can tell, right when I hit the button, it fires. I mean, there's there's no big problems with firing. I haven't had any misfires or anything where I would hit the button and it wouldn't fire right away. Just good, just good. I mean, I showed you guys a little bit the comparison on the size. I mean, it is a heavy device because you're running three 18650s. Batteries alone, puts in with the weight. But with this device, I think it feels really, really good in your hand. And you have access to the firing button. You're not going around because I have big hands. I can't even reach the wattage up and wattage down. And you can lock it so you don't have to hit it on accident. But there's no possible way that I can actually hit the wattage up, wattage down buttons. I can barely hit it with my thumb, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to try to fire it from the bottom because that's an uncomfortable position for my thumb. Um, firing is fine. The quality is fine. Everything in general, the color, I have this one. This is the gray version. This is kind of like a space gray. It's almost like the iPhone silverish dark gray, like a galaxy gray. It looks really, really nice. Another pro, like I said, it's very smooth, it's very comfortable in the hand, just the ergonomics of this thing is really, really nice. It should be on the market maybe this month, I think, so stay tuned for it, and if you guys want a new mod, that's just like the RX200, and it's going to be a pretty good hit on the market because it's going to be very affordable, and this thing is very nice, and it's upgradable. And like I said, you could charge it from here, but I don't recommend it. Anyways, so like I always say, stay strong, vape on. Peace out, you guys. Till next time.